In early 2017, Tomb Raider fans everywhere got their first look at Swedish actress Alicia Vikander as the series iconic hero Lara Croft in the upcoming film franchise reboot. But while Tomb Raider is Vikander's latest big budget action role, the star has been all over the place in the last decade, moving from Swedish indie darling to A-list celebrity. Here's a look at why the new Lara Croft looks so familiar. Pure. One of the first films to land Alicia Vikander some international recognition was 2009's Swedish drama Pure, directed by Lisa Langseth. The film stands out as a real masterpiece of Swedish cinema, landing Vikander Best Actress in a Leading Role honors at the Swedish version of the Academy Awards and launching her on the path to superstardom. A Royal Affair Vikander followed up her breakthrough performance in Pure with a supporting role opposite Moss Mikkelsen in the 2012 historical drama A Royal Affair. The critically acclaimed film earned Best Foreign Language Film nominations at both the Oscars and Golden Globes, which is ironic considering Danish was actually a foreign language for Vikander as well. She told The Independent, I had to call my friend's mother who is half Danish. She actually recorded all the lines in Danish on her iPhone and sent them to me so I was able to practice on my own. Anna Karenina Vikander's debut in English language cinema came in Joe Wright's 2012 film adaptation of Leo Tolstoy's famous novel, Anna Karenina. Filming the Russian classic was quite an adventure itself, Vikander told The Guardian. It was 40 below, we didn't have hot water for five days, and slept in a cabin, on a bench. On our call sheets, it actually said, beware of wolves. They are known to attack lone humans. We saw a wolf one time and a bear, but there were some very tough Russian security guards who came along. It was one of the most fantastic adventures I've ever had in my life. But I don't need to do it twice. The Fifth Estate Vikander's English-language acting career started gathering steam in 2013 when she landed a supporting role in Bill Condon's WikiLeaks thriller, The Fifth Estate, opposite Benedict Cumberbatch. She told GQ, I knew a lot about WikiLeaks already. One of the most famous documentaries about it came out in Sweden before the war logs were released, and Julian Assange was still considered a very brave man. Hotel 2013 saw Alicia Vikander star in the Swedish drama film Hotel, in which she plays Erica, a mother struggling with postnatal depression who finds comfort in hotel rooms. Vikander found herself attracted to the script because she enjoys playing uncomfortable roles, and because she had already worked with the film's director Lisa Langseth on Pure, she told Refinery29, I was really drawn to the script. Many women go through postnatal depression if they have a family, but it's still a very taboo subject. I've never really seen it portrayed on screen. I mean, I didn't even really know how it would work just by reading the script. I was quite amazed at how Lisa was able to bring it all to the screen. Ex Machina 2014 would prove to be a very big year for Alicia Vikander, due in no small part to her attention-getting turn in Alex Garland's Ex Machina. In the sci-fi psychological thriller, Vikander played Ava, a beautiful and dangerous robot powered by artificial intelligence, a role that landed her with a slew of award nominations. Vikander was happy for the change of pace, telling IndieWire, I just love those intimate psychological sci-fi films. Then this script came along and it's one of the best scripts I've read. Normally you come in and work on a script and Alex was very open to us to change it, but it was just a very finished product. It's a page turner. Testament of Youth. Vikander's stunning performance in Ex Machina was followed by her portrayal of writer Vera Bertain in James Kent's film adaptation of her World War I memoir, Testament of Youth. In an interview with Collider, Vikander discussed the difficulties of playing a real-life character. You want to especially give justice to her family and friends who actually still live and who remember her, who knew her. That was probably the most nerve-wracking thing to meet them in person and do that, but they were so nice and they were really there to support. Son of a Gun Alicia Vikander's third film in 2014 was Julius Avery's Australian crime thriller, Son of a Gun. Vikander told IndieWire she was hooked from the first page. When I read the script, it had such a pace, and then it turns into a heist thriller. So I was very intrigued to see how this director, who I thought was a very art house director, would do something like that. Seventh Son Sergei Bedrov's fantasy adventure film Seventh Son was the fourth high-profile release featuring Alicia Vikander to hit theaters in 2014. But it was actually one of her very first gigs, having been filmed several years earlier. Vikander told GoPride.com, This is how studios work with releasing movies. It was a big experience for me because it was the first American film that I got. The Man from UNCLE in 2015, Vikander made the jump to blockbusters with Guy Ritchie's reimagining of the hit 60s television series The Man From U.N.C.L.E. Having appeared primarily in indie or lower budget films, The Man From U.N.C.L.E. was a new experience for Vikander. She told Vulture, I mean, they closed down the Spanish steps in Rome. I was like, are you kidding? I couldn't believe it. But that's what you're able to do when you have those budgets. And it was a huge gift to be able to experience that. I could walk out on the street and feel like I'd time traveled, with 200 extras and all the shop frames changed to look like the 60s. 
The Danish Girl. In 2015, Vikander took on what would become her most famous role to date as Danish painter Gerda Wagoner in Tom Hooper's film adaptation of David Ebersoft's transgender novel, The Danish Girl. Vikander won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, but while she was happy with the win, she didn't think it was really a big deal. She told Vogue, I think it's all just buzz, and if people recognize the film and talk about the film, then maybe that will bring audiences to see our film. It's an important story to tell, so that's all we want. Burnt. Rounding out 2015, Vikander appeared in the John Wells cooking drama Burnt, in which she appears in a very brief role as Bradley Cooper's ex-girlfriend. The film was a commercial and critical disappointment, so maybe next time the producers will do the smart thing and give Vikander more screen time. Jason Bourne. 2016 saw Alicia Vikander continue her rise to mainstream stardom with her portrayal of CIA Cyber Ops Division head Heather Lee in the fifth installment of the Bourne series, Jason Bourne. It was a dream come true for Vikander, who has long been a fan of the franchise. She told The Independent, I was a teenager when I saw the first film. Even if it is a popcorn franchise movie, it's very intriguing because it has elements of political and social issues that you recognize and yet is still very entertaining. The Light Between Oceans after playing a department head at the CIA, Vikander returned to Period Fair, starring in the 2016 romantic drama The Light Between Oceans. Vikander's on-screen romance with co-star Michael Fassbender immediately led to popular speculation that they were having an off-screen romance, although neither actor would confirm the rumors. Since filming The Light Between Oceans, though, the pair's private romance has been a hot topic for tabloids, turning the stars into Hollywood's newest it couple. Tulip Fever in 2017, Vikander returned to period drama in Tulip Fever. The movie was actually filmed back in 2014, though, and as you might expect, the long delay was due to the fact that the film apparently just isn't very good. Still, with a full docket of high-profile releases on the horizon, including that Tomb Raider reboot, we've only seen the start of what promises to be a long and fascinating film career. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.